Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner, Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And it is, you know, my, when we started here, they were like beautiful snowflakes, but now it's like ice up in here. Um, we're getting pelted with little ice pellets here. Big snowstorm has hit New Jersey. Uh, horrible for business. That's why a lot of you got a bunch of emails. But, um, but definitely, a fun opportunity because Ma and I like to get out and play in the snow when we can, and uh, that's what we're doing to uh, for you today. Now, little explanation: three full days without a thunder show. Ma, a record for us, going back to June of '06. I was under the weather. It's been a little crazy with the holiday season, so you know, being a little sick. How do we come back? Come outside and be in the huge storm. Why not? And we're gonna focus on bubbles today because we're getting closer to New Year's and a lot of people talk about champagne. We've done a sparkling show with the Clicos and the Mots before. Not link that up right below if you wanna watch last year's show with the non-vintage stuff, some of the brands you see in the supermarket. We've got a couple more of them today um, to focus on and I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm also uh, extremely excited for the secret pack, the Christmas secret pack. If you're in the East Coast, you can still get it before actual Christmas. So New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Mott, link that up. And if you're not, and you want to grab it and watch it after Christmas, you can do that as well. We, uh, we've sold a boatload. So looking forward to being in your home Christmas Eve around 2, 3 o'clock. It'll be posted because I know a lot of people do it early and we want to be uh, out and about. So a lot of people have been asking about that. Also, great time to sign up for the Thunder Cruise. This weather makes me think of the cruise. We'll be talking a lot about the details of the Thunder Cruise. If you don't know what I'm talking about, mid-April, a cruise with me and a bunch of wine. Mott, link that up. I've been away a little while. I want to link up stuff. Um, and so, we'll, uh, we'll get into more details about that, but a great gift or for yourself right now. Thunder Cruise, let's get right into it. A very big brand, one of the hottest selling champagnes in the store, the Nicholas Fouillat non-vintage brute champagne monster zoom in 27 us dollars let's get into it let's see what's going on i mean this is just mod i mean this is really i mean you know we're just like playing in the snow i mean this is like baller city up here pretty cool let's see what's going on with this little brute blend here from nicholas fiat anybody who knows me really seriously in the wine world knows that i'm all about bubbles dessert island wine for me Bubbles, my friend, bubbles. I'm all about the bubs, and um, I'm a big fan of champagne. Taste a lot of it. Really feel like my palate's strong in this category. Maybe the strongest category for me, period. So definitely something that I, I'm, I'm pretty proud of. A category I really enjoy, and I think I can really break this down for you really solidly, especially as we're in this winter fest. I feel like my senses are even more on point. Let's give it a snippy sniff. I get a really nice little apple uh, component coming through right off the bat. Um, speaking of which, this cold air is a little bit kind of spidey sensing me up a little bit, Mott, because I'm really smelling this. I get a little cinnamon toast crunch component as well. My hands are starting to freeze. Let's give this a whirl. Good acid on the mid palate on this Nicolas Fouillat. Um, Good roundness, culture palette. Reminds me a little bit of the Vouv Clicquot. So if you're a yellow label fan and you're looking to go into something a little bit different and try something new, um, this, this definitely, definitely would be an alternative because it's got the creamy bubble component thing going on a little bit more than normal. Good stuff, good fruit. Not bad at all for a non-vintage kind of generic brand thing, and so, oh, Julius throwing snowballs, <laughs> trying to get funny. Um, anyway, re really not bad at all. Lacks a little bit of the complexity you look for in some of the bigger, more serious stuff out there, but still a very solid, bona fide, under $30 sparkling wine um, as Moet and Clicquot go, Paris Jouet, those brands. I think the Fouillat shows a little bit more complexity. The ice is starting to bounce, Mott. Um, a little bit more complexity than those. I'm gonna score this wine 88 plus points. I think it's solid. And for a brand that you can find out there, this may definitely be the one that you might wanna steer towards. Also, I wanna mention that I will be doing a value sparkling show next week for Cava and Prosecco. For all of you out there looking to save. Let's move on. 
Let's go right into the Mum Brute. This is a very famous classic brand, uh, one that a lot of people enjoy quite a bit. 33 US dollars. Let's give a big shout out to Patrick Ewing. Anytime we can see the 33, that's exciting. Um, comes in a little bit higher than Nicholas Fouillat. Um, 33 bones. Um, Mum is really big name brand. Again, wherever you are in the world, Helsinki, Cyprus, um, you know, Costa Rica, all the fans that watch the Thunder Show around the world, you'll be able to find this brand. It's one of the core brands. They've been rocking it since 1827. This is not a come around the way kind of thing. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Now this has a lot more baked wood kind of going on on it. I get almost like a burnt um, potato skin component on the nose which I like a little bit. Here, there's definitely a little bit more woody action going on. I also get a peach component on this champagne which I think is very serviceable and solid. Let's give it a whirl. Thank you, man. You too. Have a great holiday. Got to say hello to the fans. Good ripeness. There's a lot more acid on this wine, but it's a little bit more disjointed, believe it or not. Not as creamy as the last champagne, but loaded with really nice apple peel, which I think is darn solid. Nobody hates apple peel. Mott? That's right. Nobody. Um, really solid. I like the smokiness. If you're looking for a little bit more smoky, woody kind of action in your bubs, then this is definitely a champagne that I think brings a little bit of that thunder. That being said, I also find it a little bit unfocused and not as high in the acid category as maybe I'd like to see and a creaminess factor that is almost completely nullified. So if you're not gonna have a lot of complexity and you're not gonna have a lot of creaminess, then really I'm a little bit worried because people get tricked by the creaminess that's why they like the Clico, the Dom P, the Cristal, and the people that really love the bubs, they're looking for that real high acid complexity. This shows neither in spades, which makes it a little bit unexciting for me. I'm gonna score this wine 85 points because it still has some solid things going for it, but that being said, it's not completely dominating me, and, that, and that's a little bit of a problem, because I want to be dominated, Mott. That actually sounded weird. Anyway, let's give a little rinse. Let's move on to the third one. What you're looking at here is the Barnier Fanier Champagne. This rolls in at 35 US dollars, 91 points wine spectator. It is 100% Chardonnay. It is Grand Cru Brut. It's a Blanc de Blanc. Mott, zoom it in, make it right. Blanc de Blanc. When you see Blanc de Blanc, that means it's 100% Chardonnay action. That's what you're looking for if you like the Chard. Now this comes, Mott, let's zoom in again. Right here, you'll see Terry Thies. Can you make that out, Mott? Terry Thies, the name a little bit. You're looking for Terry Thies, a great importer of, you know, really small production. This <laughs> is coming down now. Small production, um, um, sparkling wines, and I'm a big fan of a lot of the stuff that he's, uh, he's bringing into the US. Now let's give this a sniffy sniff. Tight nose in these conditions. There we go. Uh, I'm getting a little bit of like a uh, an anise uh, kind of thing going on. I'm also getting apple peel on this one as well. I'm also getting a little bit of an apricot component coming through, which is quite nice. Let's give it a whirl. What do you think, Mott? Less than 10 times, right? I have not drank a lot of wine on the Thunder Show, but this caught me right around halftime. It kind of flipped the switch, hopefully like my New York Jets do, to the Seattle Sucky Seahawks this weekend. Really gorgeous baked apples. So kind of combining some of the things we've seen in other wines. And I get gorgeous white flower components. I get sugar cane on the mid palate, which is just gorgeous. But I get a little bit of like a cauliflower component on the back end that is almost sweetened. If you've never had sugared up cauliflower, you're just not living, folks. You're not living. And I'm telling you right now, it is a beautiful pairing. This is a marvelous effort. Um, great complexity, great fruit, and uh, I'm blown away. I think the spectator actually underrated this wine. This one really caught my attention. 
91 point spectator, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go 93 points on this champagne. Great length, has great complexity, does a lot of things that I love that $50 sparklers do, and it's doing it at 35, and I can't be upset about that. Great longevity on its baked apple flavor, just gorgeousness coming through, solid stuff, ripping stuff, Varnier, Ripped it, my friends. If you want to have a good party, VF it tonight because this one brings serious thunder. Write this name down, go and find it. This dominates most $40 to $50 sparkling uh, wines, and I'm completely blown away. It is head and shoulders above the last two, and considering the mum's only two bones less, you're comparing a major league player to a high school bench warmer. I'm also getting hurt by this ice that I'm on. Great stuff. Beautiful. And finally, I'm dying to try this. A lot of hype. One of the most respected sommeliers in New York City who I think has a gorgeous palate for bubbles told me to bring this in. I have not tried it yet. This is the RL La Grasse Champagne Grand Cru Blanc de Blanc. Again, this wine rolls in at 40 US dollars. 100% Chardonnay, 92 points Steven Tanzer. And if you know anything about the wine world, he's one tough SOB, my friends. So if he's scoring at 92 points, you know, that's really quite a high score for Tanzer. Um, 40 bones, so it's a little bit more expensive. It is pushing the top price point of this tasting. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Great color in this one. You can already see right off the bat, the nose is by far the most complex of the bunch we've had so far. I almost get like a rotten bread component coming through, which doesn't sound so exciting, but trust me it is. A hint layer of mustard coming through for me now. I'm really getting into this. There's a little bit of smokiness, a little wood action coming through, which is quite neat and great apple core coming through. Just apples, again, pears as well. Very complex nose. What we really relegate to the $100 special cuvées on nose complexity, that's what this Lagrasse is showing. So right off the bat, on nose, no comparison. Not even to the, F, the, the VF that we had just before, the Varnier Ferrier. This is really showing the Lagrasse, the most complexity on the nose. Like a density, really, right just on nose, I can tell you this wine would last the longest of the bunch. Let's give it a whirl. Right off top, by far the biggest bubble action. So if you like the fizz in your mouth, this is gonna be the champagne you want the most. Uh, let me give it one more shot. We talked about high acid in champagne. If you're a high acid fan, then this is for you. For example, if you've been a fan of Salon, you know, the really luxury cuvee, or if you've ever had um, Krug non-vintage, when you get that really high acid, more than normal, then you really know what I'm talking about. This absolutely slices through any food, by the way. In my mindset, what I want to pair this with is lobster, believe it or not. If you're a lobster fan, on New Year's, if you're popping some lobsters, you know, Maybe the recession's not hitting you. You got some lobsters and caviar and you're bubbing some bubbles. This is really a great play. If you're looking to save against, let's say, a Cristal or a Dom P this holiday, this has the chops. I think Tanzer really scored it well at 92 points. I like it a little bit better um, than the, the Varnier. So I'm gonna score it 93 plus points. Um, it's a very different wine. It's higher in acid. Um, it's not as cloying and covering in the palate as this. It's a little bit more of a focused champagne, but it really serves a tremendous purpose. I like this a whole lot. It's got great mouthfeel. This is really dominated by Granny Smith apple candy flavors, but very focused high acid, ripping through very much the most food friendly of the four champagnes and definitely the one that you can put away because it brings serious thunder for the next five to seven years. Again, lobster is the pairing here, um, or sushi, high-end sushi. I can see this being an amazing pair up. Pretty impressed with this Nicholas Fouillat for like a standard brand. But boy, can you see the difference when you go back and forth. 
Anyway, great to be back in the hot seat. Oh, maybe I should call it the cold seat. Missed you guys so much. Thank you so much for leaving more comments last time we talked about Monday, people stepped up, but it sat there for a little while too. So that being said, but I wish you nothing but the greatest holidays of your life. A lot of people complaining about business and the economy out there, but you know what, if you have your health and your family, you don't need anything else. I hope you enjoyed the show. It was a crap load of fun to do. I love to bring the thunder on gloomy days. And more importantly, I hope you go out and try new kinds of champagnes. Because what you're paying for Cristal or Dom P or Clico or Paris Jouet or Moet White Star, when you, or Imperial, whatever they call it now. And you can buy stuff like this. Unknown stuff, under the radar, grower stuff, real stuff. For a dollar or two more, or sometimes less, it boggles my mind. It is completely stupendous out there if you do a little homework on bubbles. This holiday, this New Year's, you're a vaniac, you watch the Thunder Show, make me a promise. Make me a promise. Go out there and try new bubbles. Don't buy the same old Bollinger, Tatin J, Nicholas Fouillat. Mix it up. Question of the day, what is the best bubbles you ever put in your mouth? It could be Seltzer Bot. You, with a little bit of me, Oh, we are changing the wine world.